I'm Dr. Sandra Brown. I'm an ophthalmologist in North Carolina. I have no financial conflicts of interest. I'd like to talk to you today about the Food and Drug Administration and autologous serum tears, why AST are legal and biologic eye drops aren't. I've put together quite a few video presentations by now, and I recognize that some of you may be starting out of order, which is fine. I think the later ones are better than the earlier ones. But then you might also be wondering, what is with the snail? There's a company in Italy called Helix Pharma, and they make a regenerative medicine dry eye drop called Lacra Complex. Lacra Complex contains slime that is secreted from snails, but no snails are permanently harmed in the making of the slime. Well, snail, my snail, fled to the US from Italy one slither ahead of the net. And neither snail nor I recommend lacquer complex. Disclaimer, the usual disclaimer. This presentation is subject to modification. It represents my current understanding of the United States Code, the Code of Federal Regulations. I've been reading it, reading analysis of it, and talking to FDA officials. This understanding is subject to future epiphany. First, Let's talk about how a compounding pharmacy makes autologous serum tears. The patient goes to the pharmacy. Their blood is drawn, typically in a tube that contains a clot activator. The clot activator is going to cause the blood to clot, of course. Um, and the red blood cells, white blood cells, and proteins related to clotting all clump up. And then during the centrifugation process, that clump turns into a clot at the bottom of the tube. What's left is the serum. The serum is then poured off of the tube and diluted as desired, 20 to 50% being typical dilutions, although some patients do use 100%. The pharmacy then bottles the AST, usually in bottles that are about three cc's in size. They label it, they freeze it, and deliver it back to the same patient. How does a drug manufacturer make biologic eye drops? First, they have to buy placentas or amniotic fluid from somewhere. If it's amniotic fluid, they'll filter the amniotic fluid, dilute it, and bottle it. If it's placenta, they'll have to put the placenta through a pretty substantial process to make a liquid extract, which contains proteins, dilute that extract, and bottle it. They then sell it to patients and eye care providers through interstate commerce. And you might be wondering, what on earth are the words interstate commerce doing in this talk? That sounds like the tobacco, alcohol, and firearms crowd, or maybe the FBI. But you'll see why that's quite relevant. Both AST and BED contain signaling proteins. That's why you want them. These proteins fall into a couple of categories. There are growth factors, which are involved in cell proliferation and wound healing, cytokines, which are immunomodulators. And you should note that cytokines both up and down regulate the immune system. And the net effect depends on how much of each are in play. Chemokines are a subset of cytokines that specifically induce movement of cells, white blood cells, and also epithelial cells and endothelial cells. A critical fact about all of these signaling proteins is that in the human body, they have very brief life cycles. As far as the body is concerned, it is make it, use it, destroy it. To understand this better, we recommend viewing the video Sludge. Well, my summertime reading has been the Code of Federal Regulations. Recommended viewing for the CFR, FDA Regulation of Biologic Eye Drops, Parts 1 and 2. There are a couple of enormous legal differences between AST and BED. Enormous legal difference number one is that AST are made from the patient's own blood. Therefore, there is no risk of transmission of contagious disease to someone else. And there are some pretty substantial contagious diseases that can be transmitted through blood or blood products, including HIV, hepatitis, West Nile virus, Zika virus, and others. So always remember the phrase in red, autologous means self-donated. And as far as the FDA is concerned, your germs are your own business. If you want to look up the exact reference, there it is. 
But reading down below autologous donations of blood specifically, whoever has drawn your blood and is going to do something with your blood is not required to test it if it is going to be for autologous use. You don't have to test it for evidence of infection. This is whether it's whole blood, like you're donating to yourself before surgery, or blood components such as serum. Your germs, your business, no worries. Here is enormous legal difference number two. AST are not marketed or sold through interstate commerce. This means there is no risk of transmission of any of those nasty viral diseases across state lines. And if you're thinking, this is very weird, and what does it have to do with medicine? It actually has to do with the structure of the government of the United States of America. The federal government actually can't make a whole lot of laws that affect the behavior of states. It can control the purse strings, and that's how it affects their behavior. But laws are much more state-centric than they are federal. This is why much federal regulation is related to the movement of things, whether it's bad people or bad drugs or alcohol, tobacco, and firearms from one state to another. And actually, the exact same principle applies to medications. The Surgeon General has a specific authority to control the spread of infectious disease. That's the code section that you need. And here it is. The Surgeon General is authorized to make and enforce such regulations so as to prevent the introduction, transmission, or spread of communicable disease from one state or possession into any other state or possession. Thus, if... You use your own blood to make serum tears that you use, not sell. Then the FDA and the Surgeon General both have no objection. They have no objection because there's no legal basis in either the USC or the CFR that says that they can object to this or regulate you in any way. Conversely, the Surgeon General is definitely not okay with this BED package insert, which says that current technologies may not preclude the transmission of disease. This is pretty much a Section 361 implosion. And the FDA is not okay with that package insert either, because what it says is, mm, the manufacturer makes no claims concerning the biological properties of its product. This is the tiny package insert, as opposed to the lavishly constructed webpage, where it makes numerous claims. And it's advertisements, where it also makes very specific statements of benefit for dry eye disease. Which one are you going to believe? Or, to ask it a different way, why would the package insert contradict the web page so extremely? So, Snail sums that up. Doesn't work, might infect you. There are zero package inserts for legitimate eye drops which read like this. And I have to point out, or like this, the ingredient list. And if you watch the videos on label, off label, no label, you'll get quite a tour through package inserts and ingredient lists. But our placenta eyedrop manufacturer tells us that the ingredients of that product are a mysterious sterile ophthalmic solution and sterile water. Our amniotic fluid BED manufacturer tells us that this product contains extracellular vesicles secreted from amniotic fluid. Well, they're not secreted from the amniotic fluid, they're floating in the amniotic fluid. And once again, mm, we know nothing else about what's in that bottle, except no preservatives. We do know that for both products. Let's sum it up. Autologous serum tears versus biologic eye drops. The protein source for AST is yourself and for BED, strangers. The risk of disease for AST, nothing you don't already have. For BED, unknown but not zero. Does it require approval by the FDA? AST, no. BED, yes. Approved by the FDA? AST, not applicable. BED, no. Manufactured at a compounding pharmacy for AST, a processing facility or tissue lab for BED. Is it sold through interstate commerce? AST, no, I hope. BED, yes. How are you supposed to store unopened bottles? AST is frozen, 
BED, depending on product, refrigerated or room temperature. How about an open bottle? AST, refrigerated. BED, refrigerated or room temperature, depending on product. After that bottle's open, discard after, AST, 7 to 14 days, BED, 90 days. And what is the unfrozen shelf life? AST, we'll say 14 days or less. BED, the manufacturer's claim, two or three years. All of those rows with the asterisk, I would once again encourage you to see the video sludge. And we have a whole lot of breaking the law here. BED manufacturers will make a couple of attempted rebuttals. Attempted rebuttal number one, BED are regulated like amniotic membrane grafts. The problem is that amniotic membrane grafts are regulated as medical devices, not as drugs. And if you're a medical device, you still have to have what's called a 510K pre-market approval letter from the FDA. If you want to look up one of those, there's the web citation for Procara. But let's just think about this for a moment. The manufacturing processes, how it works, and risk of use for an amniotic membrane graft have no relevance to biologic eye drops. One is a membrane, the other is a liquid. They are not the same. Hopefully your common sense tells you they are not the same. Attempted rebuttal number two, it's a tissue, not a drug. And this is one reason why you'll see both manufacturers frequently using the term allograft. See FDA regulation of biologic eye drops parts one and two for more details on the reality of these regulations than you ever wanted. But the short version is that neither product is a tissue. And that's because placenta is not even on the list of allowed human tissues for tissue processing establishments, and amniotic fluid is classified as a secreted product. People who've watched my other videos have um, seen this screenshot before. It's a screenshot of the possible types of tissue that a tissue establishment could collect from donors and transform in some way so that they could be used by recipients. It's an alphabetical list, and I want you to notice that placenta is not in between peritoneal membrane and sclera. Placenta is just not on this list at all. It's not a tissue that the FDA believes you can transform into anything that can be used by a recipient. How about amniotic fluid? Well, shortly before I came over here to record this presentation, I was trying to figure out where all this amniotic fluid is coming from. And it turns out that there's a very complex procurement and processing chain, which is unreal. Think massive profits being made off of the generous donations of pregnant women who are having C-sections. It needs its own video. Stay tuned. I was able to find a couple of sources online that stated that they would sell amniotic fluid. And here's one of them, my biosource. I did have a phone conversation with my biosource. It was kind of frustrating. I sent a follow-up email. If I get some good information back, I'll share it with you. But I will say, compared to the other suppliers, I do have some respect for my biosource because they say this. All of their products are for scientific laboratory research purposes and are not for diagnostic, therapeutics, prophylactic, or in vivo use. In vivo means used on something that's alive. I think you're alive. My biosource further says that it reserves the right to refuse to process any order where the company reasonably believes that the intended use will fall outside of their acceptable guidelines. So if they think that you're buying their amniotic fluid, and turning it into biologic eye drops, they won't sell it to you. I found a couple of other online resellers and I did not find similar disclaimers. I can hear you thinking to yourself, but my doctor says it's fine. But your doctor may not understand a number of things. First, the FDA approval status. Biologic eye drops require FDA approval, but none of them are approved. Your doctor may not understand the regulatory differences between AST and BED. He or she may not really have thought about the scientific implausibility 
of having functional proteins in a non-frozen BED after more than a few days. And your eye doctor may also be unaware of the risks related to using a non-preserved eye drop that does not have a multi-dose preservative-free dropper. On the flip side, your doctor may believe a couple of things. First, that true innovation is disruptive and often occurs outside the rules. If they believe this, then all the concerns listed under your doctor may not understand will probably not sway them. Your doctor may believe that the lack of reported problems from their colleagues means the product is safe enough to recommend, even without evidence that it works. And your doctor may believe that amniotic membrane grafts and biologic eye drops have similar levels of legality, manufacturing consistency, and proven safety. But you say, I've watched many of your videos, and I still want to use biologic eye drops. Okay. You have to understand that there is no data on the likelihood of benefit versus the likelihood of harm. But every patient has the right to make up their own mind about any drug or other treatment. It's just important that this decision is an informed decision. So if you have watched our educational video series, you are much more informed than most patients and probably the majority of eye care providers. Education is the primary mission of BiologicEyeDrops.org. So if you've watched our videos, watched Rebecca's videos, and you feel educated, and you feel as though you're making an informed decision, and your decision is to use this product, then that is your decision. We simply ask that if you suffer a complication, you report it to the Food and Drug Administration. Be smart. If you won't rub it on your face, don't drip it in your eyes. And I will say, at least the Italian snail slime drop has a multi-dose preservative-free dropper. Snail is still planning to apply for a green card. I hope this information has given you a good understanding of the differences between autologous serum tears and biologic eye drops, so that when you hear or read any commentary that AST and BED are very similar, or that BED are a more convenient version of AST, you understand that from a legal perspective, this is not true. If you also watch the video Sludge, I think you will understand that from an actual therapeutic perspective, this is also not true. Thank you for listening.